Restaurant owners in the United Arab Emirates have a love-hate relationship with food marketplaces like uh, Uber Eats, Karim Now, Deliveroo, Zomato, Talabat. Let us dive into how it all works. What food marketplaces provide to restaurant owners are four things. Acquiring the customer, payment processing, delivery, and customer care. Food marketplaces have their own customer base that they've acquired over time and they continue to acquire customers via active campaigns and partnerships. Active campaigns means acquisition using Instagram, Facebook, Google, Twitter, and other digital platforms, and also partnerships with offline and online entities in order to uh, get further customers to come and join that food delivery platform. That is done at the cost of the food marketplace without uh, passing on the cost uh, initially to the restaurant owner. Payment processing enables the end customer to pay using the food marketplace for the food. And that's also handled by the food marketplace via its uh, implementation and partnership with its own uh, merchant gateway or pay payment processor. The delivery is done by once a user uh, uh, makes an order, uh, a, a driver is dispatched to go to the restaurant to pick up the food. So that shortens the, the wait period uh, for the user. So as soon as, as the food is ready, the driver is, is already there, he or she picks up the food and heads, heads directly to the end consumer, uh, shortening the period and increasing the chance of the food coming in uh, hot and fresh. Customer support is when something goes wrong. The food is extensively late or, or it's spilled, or it's not uh, hot, or there's a problem with the order, something was missed or forgotten. Uh, the food marketplace has its own customer support channels and customer support team, and acts as a mediator between the restaurant, the driver, and the end consumer. The combination of the food marketplace providing the customer, the payment processing, the driver, and the customer support, in exchange for that, uh, the food marketplace charges the restaurant uh, around 30% on order on average. Let us look into the scenario when there is no food marketplace and the restaurant is going straight to the consumer. What the restaurant will need to do is first to invest in technology extensively. There needs to be an app for the end consumer and it needs to be a solid app that competes with a lot of food uh, delivery apps. And that app will have the menu of the restaurant, the offers, the promotion, the ability to customize and pay and, and so on. Uh, there needs to be a kitchen app, typically on an iPad, where once the order uh, is placed by the end user, the order comes to uh, the kitchen and uh, the uh, kitchen staff can process uh, the order. And there needs to be a driver app so that when the food is ready, it's assigned to the driver. The driver has the location of where, uh, where to go and uh, the driver can contact the customer or the back-end kitchen to, to address things. The payment processing involves the restaurant dealing with either their, the bank they do work with today or, their, uh, uh, or finding a payment gateway, uh, which there are many uh, in the UAE. That involves a logistical setup of opening the account, so proof of license, address, and the whatever uh, the KYC, know your customer process that the merchant gateway uh, or bank would ask for. Then once that setup is done, there's the technical setup where there's an account with the merchant gateway and there's the code and the SDK of the merchant gateway that needs to be implemented in the technology apps of the, uh, of the user especially. And then there's the, uh, the traditionally a monthly fee and a transaction fee. And the monthly fee is even if you don't do any transactions, that applies. When it comes to the delivery part, uh, that's where uh, restaurants struggle maintaining a balance between the peak period for breakfast, lunch and dinner when there is a lot of demand and the time in between when, when the staff are idle. And that's usually balanced between keeping a combination of, of restaurants' own drivers and uh, a third-party uh, delivery 
service that will provide the drivers. And keeping in mind when you have drivers, that means you're looking at insurance, uh, the vehicles uh, covering the cost of the fuel. Uh, if the driver handles that, uh, then that means that you're paying them a higher fee. Uh, training, uh, high turnover rates, so uh, where do they stand and stay? Uh, so there's a lot, there are a lot of, uh, of uh, specifics when it comes to the restaurant handling uh, uh, the delivery directly on their own. There's also the aspect of customer service when something goes wrong and the customer wants to, to call or message and complain. That needs to be handled by a specific trained staff. They need to have their own procedure for receiving that uh, uh, that complaint, being empowered enough to handle it, being able to escalate, being able to, to, to soothe the customer, being able to compensate them. So the, that's the aspect. So having the aspect of the technology, the payment, the customer acquisition, the marketing, uh, the drivers, uh, the customer support, all of those are a significant investment by the restaurant. So there needs to be a decision by the restaurant owners to look at, are we going to commit to having our own strong, powerful delivery. And that means we're gonna to have to allocate funds over the next year or two to commit properly to do this. Or are we going to uh, not take that step and let the marketplace handle that? Although uh, the restaurant will be pay paying a, 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 a higher fee, they'd be able to offload that uh, uh, cost and logistical part onto the, the, the marketplace. Hence, the love-hate.